Thanks so much. Thanks for sticking around, second day of WordCamp. How's everybody feeling this morning? Everybody get their coffee? Hang on one second, I'm gonna send a tweet out to invite some people to join. Okay, it's sent. All right, so just to get an idea of the room, I wanna know how many of you are, would consider yourself a freelance website developer? Raise your hand. Okay. Good lay of the land, lay of the room. Okay. Now, which, which of you would consider yourself, you know, WordPress power user, WordPress user? Okay, fantastic. So I hope that everybody will get, you know, some good nuggets out of this talk. Uh, my purpose for this subject in, in particular is really for the things that we really don't think too much about when we're working with clients and there's constraints brought into projects such as, you know, budgets, uh, such as timelines. So uh, I'm hopeful that we can come away from this talk and understand how much user interface will benefit our clients and help us work with our clients. So with that said, let's go ahead and get cracking. All right, so I wanna share a little bit, a little story about user interface and about how uh, it can really help critical situations. You can look at this uh, screen, and many of your eyes may be really hurting right now. Uh, this is the screen of a medical, like a medical, you know, software or whatnot. Uh, a lot of nurses, a lot of hospitals use this, and it's really important if you study this screen a little bit, you'll see this little red indication with these tiny little letters and it's really hard to understand. So uh, for some reason, I don't see my speaker notes, so I'm gonna go ahead and click away here. So uh, the story here, when we're looking at this screen, I uh, was looking online and realized that there was a story about uh, a young gal named, we'll call her Jenny. And she was a cancer patient, and she had once kind of defeated cancer, kind of went into remission, and you know, spent some time and then actually came back. She was, she was discharged and came back. Um, she, had, she, had to, she had to come back on her. She had to give, be given a very strong chemo to make sure that she was you know, going to hope to beat her cancer. You guys are reading along with me here, I see. So I appreciate the effort. Um, so since the, you know, the medicine was so strong and you know, we may had needed to make sure that she was, you know, uh, they gave her an extra dose, you know, she needed to have hydration before and after uh, through an IV. So what the challenge was is everything as we understand, software is so heavily used in the healthcare industry, hospitals, you know, all over the gamut, and we understand that the nurses, the doctors, everybody involved with giving people care, they're very dependent on these, these interfaces and this software to be able to best give the, give the best care for their patients. So the nurses that were charged to take care of this, this little girl, they, uh, they missed this little indication come up. And I'm sure that you can see what's coming next. They actually missed some very critical alerts. And what happened was uh, Jenny had actually passed away because they missed the indications that was coming up on the screen because of this little bitty indication. So, I don't want to get very, I, I don't mean to bring you down so, so much on Sunday. Let's start with a very depressing story. Uh, you know, I just, I, I think it's helpful to understand that we understand, I think it's helpful for us to know how critical user interface plays to not only very, you know, life or death situations, but also when we are working with clients, giving us the right type of idea and the care that they need for their businesses and they need for their projects. I'll give another example. Uh, this is an airplane cockpit, um, of course. Um, and uh, there was a flight, let me see if I remember the story by heart. So uh, there was a flight in 1992 and it was bound for Strasbourg, Strasbourg, France. And uh, they had been on a flight and the screen was super small. I don't think this was the actual screen, so disregard the actual size of this screen. Actually, this screen's not too bad. I think you could see that. So I realize 
in hindsight, this was a terrible choice for a bad <laughs> user interface. Ignore the size of the screen, people. Uh, but anyway, the user interface on the cockpit screen had identified these little, little indications of when warnings would come up, such as maybe you're getting close to a mountain. And um, I'm going to adjust your. OK. Uh, so, you know, like as an uh, airplane pilot was coming close to maybe mountains or maybe another airplane, they would get these little indications. So little did they know, maybe this wasn't tested properly or whatnot, but the pilots weren't able to see that mountains were in the way. So you can kind of guess the rest of the story. Thank you, sir. Um, what happened was they crashed into the mountains. So, you know, again, user interface is so important. And these two stories, very critical. We need to understand you know, what the things we need, you know, we need to understand what are the things that are very obvious, life and death, critical, the things we need to understand. So, you know, in this case, we can, we can think about, you know, what, was, what went wrong, what's the solution, you know, what, what would the solution of a good user interface play? I think it's obvious in both cases. You know, we have the child who died, unfortunately, she passed away. Uh, the blame can't be placed on the nurses, per se, the doctor that was caring for her, or even the software engineers that put it together. I think that there's a collective responsibility for those things because at some level, we understand that those details were just missed. They weren't thought of. And as it translates to us in this room who take care of website, you know, do website projects and we work with clients, there's a lot of insecurity about you know if we have a rush timeline or if we have some instance that maybe the budget isn't right where we have to take care of things getting it all inside of that initial project can be a challenge but it's a great benefit to our clients if we're not only thinking about that and communicating that during the initial project but maybe after the fact of preparing them for how to improve their user interface not that anybody's going to die by using their website god willing but you know, we can think in these situations, the user interface, a shared communication really would provide, you know, a life-saving instance, or a life, rather a life-saving life solution in this instance. So I think if we're not in the design field, if you yourself, you consider yourself more of a developer, there's a good show of hands, a lot of us consider ourselves website developers. Uh, the challenge is that if we're not naturally trained to think of design, it could be really confusing, really uh, not really straightforward to think about how design would help, or not really uh, you know understand exactly how design coincides with our projects. So I think it's important that we understand the differences between exactly what user interface is and exactly for say what user experience is. So the biggest thing I think that we get confused of, even myself when we're going through a project, is understanding the differences between user interface and user experience. And there's a really good uh, example here from Web Designer Depot. And we understand the differences about you know, user interface. It's, it's actually something more tangible or something you know, visual. And understand that user experience is actually related to, you guessed it, experience. You guys still with me today? Yeah. Appreciate you all, every one of you. All right, so again, basic reminder for all of us, if we're in the design, you know, if we're in the design world, we consider ourselves maybe a hybrid or a unicorn designer and developer. We understand the differences, but it's really, you know, it's a really good reminder to remember, you know, just a, just a good check to make sure that we understand the differences about user interface, user experience, and understand how it's gonna benefit our clients. This picture, a lot of us have seen the differences between design and user experience. Who's not seen this picture? Okay, pretty much every one of you. <laughs> I have 15 minutes of notes dedicated to this slide and I get to use them. I'm teasing. Uh, you know, you could see clearly, you know, understanding the difference. And again, I think I consider myself self-taught. You know, I didn't go to the, the College of Web Design and College of Web Development or how to do amazing projects for clients. We're all learning as we go. We're all, all not experts in business, in our craft. We're constantly learning. 
So it's good to know these reminders and understand you know, that we're always on a path of learning. We're on our journey to give better experiences for clients. And again, the goal for me with sharing all of this is that you know, myself, me and Modifact, you know, we're constantly concerned about doing a better job for our clients and giving them good service because the thing that we realize, if you do client work and you work with people uh, that we build websites for and there's people in the business, uh, the biggest thing that they're really concerned about is the service that we provide them and the care that we provide them. So again, if we're thinking about user interface and we're thinking about design, even if that's really not our craft, it's really important to think about that ongoing dialogue we have with them. If we maybe miss something in the current scope, we maybe miss something in the project, we can always come back and communicate that to them. I'm gonna do a Marco Rubio right now. Everybody forgot that already? <laughs> All right, user interface. I think, um, again, we're talking a lot about design, but really, User interface doesn't always have to do with design. It's not always opening Photoshop and creating a website, you know, design or putting a grid together or designing buttons. This is really like, really uh, lots of noise up here. Maybe I'm over the weight limit or something. Subtle way of letting me know. You know, it's important to remember, we're not always thinking about just the, uh, the visual aesthetic of user interface. It's really about human behavior. It's really about anticipating you know, the usability of things that we create on the web or objects or whatnot. You know, we think about it, if we're committed to creating great projects for clients, if we're, create, if we're committed to creating good experiences for, you know, the products we create or whatnot, you know, we need to think about, you know, what's the experience the client or the end user comes away when they use the things that we create as website developers and designers. Um, you know, it's not always about, you know, really getting the best user interface and creating the best aesthetics and the best feeling designs. The best designs are almost the designs that we don't even really notice. Do you guys kind of, do you agree with that? Do you track with that? You know, our clients definitely will say that. Um, you know, again, a nice transition into that is just understanding what the, what the real meaning, what the real definition of user interface. You know, what, what, is, it act, what is it actually? And you know, we understand that it's you know, nowhere in that, in that definition is it saying a graphic you know, layout or a visual aesthetic. You know, it's really just about humans interacting with a said thing, object, screen, or whatnot. And we understand that. So kind of alluded to this a little bit, you know, we usually remember the interfaces that we touch and we use that do not work well. Uh, I think that's mostly in my case. And we usually come away from experiences on things that we use and we understand those to be really great and we don't remark about those. It's kind of like eating at a restaurant. You're not gonna tell people that you, you're usually gonna tell people about a bad experience you had rather than a good experience, right? That's, that's pretty much natural with most human behavior. We come away from these experiences using things and we realize, man, that's terrible. That's just a terrible user interface. I could think of one industry in particular that just is awful, and that would be car user interface. Is anybody with me? Does anybody have like a touch screen in their car? They're god awful, all right? So somebody, the challenge for one of you today is to go and revolutionize that industry. Are you with me? All right. So again, we remember the bad experiences we have with interfaces. We need to be putting ourselves in our client's shoes, not only our client's shoes, but also their customer's shoes and their user's shoes. Now, I wanted to look at one website in particular, the New, York, New Yorker website uh, running on WordPress. And you'll realize there's nothing fancy about this website. You know, it's, it's text and images. However, when they created the website, they realized that everybody using this website would intuitively understand how to use it. You know, all the hit areas are programmed to, 
take you to the article, whether you're hitting the image, whether you're hitting the text, everything brings you to exactly where you should be. So, you know, that's, this is just one example. And we could have a good laugh, I could have, you know, 15 slides of terrible, you know, user interfaces, but I think we understand there's just plenty of them, you know, to go around. Who remembers this commercial? Okay, I want somebody to stand up and recite it from end to end. <laughs> Who wants to? Uh, I think I'll try. You know, go for it. How many licks does it take to get to the center with Tootsie Roll, Tootsie Pop? How many? One, two, <laughs> crunch, three. Yep. The world will never know. All right, give this guy a hand. That's fantastic. I hope we got that on video. I'm not going to repeat it because he was he did a really great job, and I think I'll just uh, disappoint you. Um, but I think about this, this, this visual comes into my mind a lot when we're creating things for the web. How easy are we making it for people's lives? You know, like, I don't want to get too philosophical on you guys this morning. It's, you know, we're still waking up and we haven't really hit a full dose of caffeine, but we are responsible for making people's lives better as website developers and designers. We're responsible for making our clients' lives better. We're responsible for making our clients' customers' lives better. And so when you think about it, how many barriers are we creating for them to hit the end goal? You know, I want to, you know, as a little bit of business advice, I'll say it to myself as well. I think we're too afraid when we're giving these constraints on timelines and budgets and whatnot to achieve a certain, certain scope. We're afraid to communicate our to our clients the tough conversations. Now, even if you've inherited a project that's in flames, has a short timeline, and has to be turned around, I'm sure nobody's ever had that happen, right? Even if we have that outcome, we have those circumstances or constraints in a project, we can still have that conversation and elude and help our clients to understand exactly what's going to benefit them and their customers. So thinking about the, the dialogue in this commercial, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop? How many clicks does it take to get to the end result for the end client? So I should have done it as animated as you did with my own you know, website example, so, but I won't. Next time. So again, you know, thinking about how easy are we making it? You know, how many steps does it take to convert on something? You know, are we making the user interface very obvious? Is there a style guide involved? Is the client's brand brought into the, des the, the design of the website? Is it very clear to the user intuitively when they show up on the site, they know what to do? Again, I, th I think the challenge for all of us is that we get so lost in the weeds of the projects and getting them done, we don't really think about the, the benefits of, the, of a strong user interface, an obvious user interface. You know, I think it, there's a lot of thought about intuitive, intuitive use, you know. How many, of our, how many of us have kids or nephews, nieces, cousins, younger kids? They pick up a magazine, they start swiping or start, you know. The magazine's not moving when I swipe my finger on it. You know, Apple has this right about intuitive use. They understand exactly how things should work. You know, this is, you know, this, these are things we need to think about when we create projects and it can be tough, you know, when we're, we've got, you know, maybe an e-commerce website or a membership website or something that's beyond just a simple marketing website. We need to think about all of these human behaviors. Really at the, at the core of what we're getting at, you know, what, what's, what's so urgent, what's so huge about user interface? What's, what's the biggest deal? Why are we so, why should we care so much about it? Yeah, I think it's, there's so much in our lives that we're dependent upon by using computers, using our phones, walking up to an ATM, uh, the pharmacy, you know, buying movie tickets. So many things we have to do, we're dependent on user interface. We're dependent on using machines, using technology to make our lives better. But we're most observant of that when we see that it makes our lives more difficult. So. I come from Arizona, and I'm sure my government is no different than your government, uh, wherever you're from. They don't really do the best <laughs> websites. And don't get me wrong, I love Arizona. You know, I'm born and raised, 
Phoenix, Arizona, till I die. No. Uh, but seriously, you know, you come onto these, these websites and you realize that this is making my life so difficult. Can you imagine if the DMV translated everything to a machine? Imagine how difficult that would be. Maybe they should take it all online, but then again, they would probably make the situation very terrible, and then they'd just be laughing at the fact that it would take us just as long to use the website. Maybe that wouldn't be so funny. But you get the picture. We're so dependent on these things. And if we're responsible for creating these things, no matter who we work for, we're responsible to have better communication skills, more empathy, and be thinking about who we serve with the people that we use these things. Translating from a computer to an object we use every day. This is actually a picture of my refrigerator. Uh, my wife calls it the bad news fridge because usually I'll just show like pic you know pictures and news, and it's always like you know terrible things that are happening all over the world. So she's called it the bad news fridge. <laughs> but you know you could see clearly there's a user interface on this fridge. How far are we out from having everything in our house have a touch screen on it, a user interface? We have TVs. Uh, my TV remote has like this little laser that I can point and and do things with and. It listens to all my conversations and you know, puts you know, spies on me, essentially. And I could talk to my Xbox. I can touch things. You know, how, how far out are we having all of these things that have user interfaces on them? So again, if we're responsible with creating these things, whether it's just as simple as a website, we really need to be thinking about how important they are. Probably the most important thing that we can touch, that we deal with, is mobile. If we're a website developer, we deal a lot with making websites functional for mobile devices. And mobile devices, it's so important because if you take anything away from this talk, please remember, all eyes on me. All eyes on me. Um, seriously, every user on mobile will want to do as much as they can on a desktop on their mobile device. If you look at analytics, if you study everything, and this is no surprise to anybody in this room, analytics, visits on a website are more prominent for mobile devices than even desktops. That trend will not end. That trend will continue to be more splintered and more dispersed amongst other devices. I mean, I've got a watch that has a user interface that has the web on it, and it continually is buzzing on me. I mean, and that's, at some point, I'm gonna be looking at portions of a website on my watch. So we think about mobile and we think about even if we've got constraints in a project, and maybe we're using a theme that somebody else created, maybe we're using a premium theme that we're tweaking, we really need to think about how does the responsive view work and function for the end user. Here's an example right here. This website, uh, some type of news publication, you can see that there's not really a lot of care about the end user. There's a lot of things that benefit the company for getting users to subscribe and sign up and whatnot, but it's a terrible experience because I'm hit with ads, hit with an upsell, there's so much room taken up with letting me know which page I'm on. It's ridiculous, you know? I think if we're creating, you know, even e-commerce or very complicated things for the web, it's really tough to make sure all of these little pieces function well on mobile. And even if it's tough, we still have to make sure that it's done right. And I think the challenge and the fear we have in this room is that we are afraid of having that tough conversation with a client. And again, even if we push out or we ship out a first version of a site, we could still have that iterative design to help fix things and, and increase our engagements with clients and help their lives become better and their customers' lives better. Another thing we're thinking about with user interface is accessibility. A lot of our users of the things we create have physical challenges when they're using devices. We're thinking about specifically colorblind users, people that have not, not so good, of, you know, they don't understand, or, or they can't differentiate colors as well on a screen. You know, what about people that can't see at all, you know? How well are those interfaces designed for them 
to tag in with maybe some type of voice command. Elderly users, you know, are we thinking about them? There's, I, I go everywhere I go, I see uh, everybody of a certain age has an iPhone now. Those are some of our target users. We can't leave them out. Look at this image right here. If you don't have a migraine before, you do now. Seriously, guys, I mean, I think we're all guilty of, of overlooking these details. I mean, this is an extreme example, but we need to think about these people that use our, our uh, user interfaces. Looking at a layout of some buttons, looking at the key differences of, you know, just subtle things that would cause our users to better intuitively understand what behavior they should take on each of those buttons. It's so important. Now getting more to, you know, how do we fix this problem? You know, how do we create a better experience for our clients and their clients, or their customers rather? You know, the easy way is if you're just a pure developer, if you're a company that just is focused on the development, bring in a user interface designer, bring in somebody who's really good at this to kind of partner up with so that they can lend some ideas about how to create a better user interface. You know, another idea is if we're maybe a lone wolf or somebody who's just on their own and we don't really have a, uh, the benefit of having a large community to kind of speak into creating a better experience, you know, using a theme that's really well made and really well thought of uh, in the repo or whatnot is a really great, place, really great place to start. And again, you know, obviously, we need, we need to be reaching out for help. We need to be understanding that our goal is not just, you know, getting through an initial small project or dealing with the constraints, but making people's lives better, essentially. So, just kind of wrapping up here, you know, we understand that user interface goes way beyond design. It's not just about the aesthetics. It's really about human behavior. How do we use things better? I looked at the definition of user interface, understanding the key difference between that and user experience. And we understand how critical and important user interface really is. And then lastly, looked at what are, this, what are some things we can do to better create a user interface? So, my name is Cody Landefeld. I'm the founder of Modeffect. We're a small shop in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I'd be happy to stick around, answer any questions you have. If um, you would be so inclined, I actually have a link on my website. If you go to modeffect.com forward slash WCLAX, you can get my slides. And if uh, you're looking for some tips on design or whatnot, you could sign up for our email list. I'm not selling anything, obviously. Now you think I am. Uh, but uh, feel free to sign up. We'll love to stay in touch with you guys. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Cody L. And uh, it's a pleasure being with you this morning. Thanks. <laughs> we have time for questions? Time for questions. All right. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. How do you deal with uh, when when a client's asking you to do something you know is inherently wrong, usability-wise, or something like that, how do you have that conversation with them and convince them? Not that you need to convince them, but how do you deal with that? Uh, so the question was, when a client is asking us to do something inherently wrong, how do we convince them to make the choice within best practices? Correct. Uh, you know, in those cases, I think you just show a couple of examples of projects like theirs and show really great examples of how that was solved and help them understand nobody else has ran into this problem before, have they? I'm guessing we all have at some point. I think it's just best to show that, give them the evidence, but at some point if our clients are ultimately making the decision on their projects, then you know, they're, at the end of the day they're paying and you just have to remind them of the benefits. Like, you know, Web, web developers are kind of like doctors. You know, we, we can best tell people what to do to avoid major issues, but we can't make them do things. So it's a challenge. I've been there before, my friend. Yeah? Uh, in designing for, for mobile, um, I was talking to, I have a 17 year old daughter, and she was sitting around with her friends, and we, we started to talk about websites. And she said that she, whenever there, she comes, 
when she's looking on her phone, she always prefers to go to the full website button because she says it's just you see more. You can, you can see the full experience, and she doesn't mind you know, it's pleasing to, to resize it. What, what would you say to that? I mean, like, does that mean that the mobile site has not been designed well? She's doing it wrong. No. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. So the question is, you know, she has a 17-year-old daughter. She prefers to, on a mobile device, click the full website button and kind of pinch and do whatever. No, that's important because I think in a lot of cases, let's be honest, mobile responsive web design has a long way to go. It's really a challenge to get it just right in all cases across the board. Just slapping on one theme is not going to fix every website's problem. So I mean, I think that's a lot of times that's an evidence of a bad mobile design website. Um, I think it's still it's still got a, a ways to go before it's really great, and that's a telling yeah. example of it not being. Uh, I was really surprised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've 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 seen those before. I mean, I, I prefer to use you know, a full website over a really bad mobile version of a website too. So I'm, I'm right there with her. Yeah. yeah. Can I just ask her a question? Are you sure your daughter didn't learn this now bad habit four or five years ago when responsive web design really didn't No, 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 she was looking at something else. Well, no, I'm saying that she learned this habit like four years ago and now it's just, no, the mobile site always stinks. And so she automatically she gets. Most websites don't have the view the full site button, so. Yes, sir. I think that uh, maybe there, a lot of people try to design it to make it look like an app rather than a website. Yeah, that's a classic. Make it look like an app instead of a website. And yeah, this gentleman. It was, makes sense sometimes because some mobile phones are small and you don't have a lot of real estate. Right. So you can't have everything on it, but I, do, I find myself doing the same thing. I'll, I'll go to the website and select the uh, regular uh, website. Sure. This gentleman was saying a lot of mobile websites are designed to be looking like an app. And I think that's you know missed opportunity because they don't function the same way a lot of often. And sometimes it's very poor just to try to get it working on smaller screens. Yes, sir. Um, I've seen also similar things, but in a way that people will go to a website, especially kids who yeah. are 20, yeah. and they'll just look for where are you on Facebook. <laughs> and they won't even look at the site. They just look at the social follow button. And I've seen that a couple of times. It's just like, wow. Yeah. So this gentleman was saying a lot of younger users are looking and moving on to social networks. Yeah. And there's a trend of younger users getting off of Facebook. They don't want to be on Facebook. They don't want to be on anything but Snapchat or Tumblr or whatnot. It's it's a challenge and I think you know, we have a we have a job to do as a community of website developers. We need to understand, you know, how do we create better experiences and make people's lives better? Because guess what? This is not going away. There's only more devices shipping every single day and it's getting more convoluted all the time. Any other questions, thoughts? Yes, sir. You know, um, so the question was, the quote I had shared earlier, and it was a quote, uh, I just didn't give the credit and I will now. Um, the question was about the quote, mobile users expect to do as much as they do on desktops on mobile. Um, how do we come to that conclusion? So that was actually a quote from Brad Frost, uh, and he had kind of pointed that out because he's, you know, does a lot of design for mobile and, and whatnot, but a absolutely, in most cases across the board, we are seeing most traffic come from mobile, uh, depending on the site. And it, it's just, it depends on the industry, obviously, it depends on the website, but it's just becoming more and more of a thing. I find myself wanting to do more, buy more online. I'm doing more with Amazon. I'm doing more with, you know, buying whatever thing I'm interested in on a website. And I find myself being extremely frustrated by not being able to do it at the time when I open their link on Twitter or Facebook and it takes me to the mobile site because I'm sitting in a doctor's office or I'm sitting in the DMV for four or five hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not, it, people don't like, 
If we're trying to capture people's attention, they are not going to wait until five hours later when they get in front of their desktop. They want to do it on a mobile. So that's, that's a good indication of the trend just because of human behavior. Can I get like 10 more minutes? I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. We're all set. Thank you so much.